Orleans. This is Comedy Central Stand Up Presents. Please welcome Joel Kim Brewster. Oh my goodness, how do I? Oh wow, look at you guys, this is so fun. Pretty cool. Um, my life is going pretty well, though. I have to say, uh, earlier this year, something pretty major happened for me. I became an uncle for the first time, uh, which is pretty cool. Oh, thank you so much. I had nothing to do with it, but cool. Um, I'll take the congratulations. Yeah, I became an uncle, and that's really cool. I'm really excited. Less cool. Uh, I have a very religious family, and there were many people in my family who were concerned about me being around the baby because I am gay. Um, I know, which is sort of ridiculous, because it's like nobody in my family has seen any of the guys that I've because I can do so much better than some baby, okay? Like, come on. <laughs> Look at what I'm working with here, all right? <laughs> that baby wishes, all right? My sister's baby should be so lucky <laughs> at the end of the day. My family is very, very Christian. They're very evangelical uh, Southern Baptist Christians. They're so Christian that they homeschooled me until I was 16 years old because they did not want me learning about sex or evolution. And as like a fun fringe benefit of that, now I don't know about states either, uh, which is pretty cool. <laughs> Just never knowing where I am, you know? Uh, I recently truthfully had to ask a friend, what is Oklahoma? You know, because <laughs> it seems sort of unclear. Yeah, so not a lot of practical knowledge going on up here in the old noggin, but uh, to sort of offset that, I am a nationally ranked Bible quizzer, which is pretty cool. That's a thing. Okay, got some uh, weirdos in the audience, too. That's great. Um, so I know a lot about that, but sort of on the flip side of that coin, I've never used a condom, you know? So it is a trade-off uh, in the sort of knowledge you learn. Most of my family is from the South, actually. Um, yeah, I love the South. They're great, they're great. Uh, my mom is a real Southern lady. She's one of these ladies who thinks that our generation, well, we got too many participation trophies and that's why we are the way we are, you know? <laughs> Gay, that's what she <laughs> pins that on. But uh, uh, weirdly, my mom is also one of these people who's like, oh, no, no, you cannot take that Robert E. Lee statue down from my college campus, no, ma'am. And it's like, but mom, like, those statues are history's greatest participation trophies, you know? Like, <laughs> y'all lost, all right? We let you erect a statue. So, think about that. Okay. I was actually, um, I was actually adopted, hence why my mom sounds like Foghorn Leghorn. Uh, I know some of you were confused. Um, you're like, something does not fit. Um, yeah, I was adopted from South Korea. South Korea, for those of you, you might know this, uh, it was the only country in the 80s that would fly a baby to the US. You did not have to go and pick it up. So in many ways, it was like the grub hub of babies, you know? They would just <laughs> fly a baby straight to your door. No hassles, no fees, it was great. But um, yeah, so it was an interesting thing for me growing up with this face in an all white family in an all white town. Like I fully knew I was gay before I knew I was Asian. Um, <laughs> that's a sad but true fact about me. It was a Quite the rude awakening when I finally found out, I have to tell you. It was tough, but it's even tougher for me now because like, I don't meet a lot of like cultural expectations of what an Asian person should be in this country, you know? Like I'm terrible at math. I don't know karate. My dick is huge, you know? So it's just like on and on and on. Like, oh God. Just constantly disappointing white people, you know? Uh, it's tough. I actually don't know if it's that big or not. Um, because every time I look at it, it's pixelated. So, <laughs> sort of anybody's guess at that point. Okay. So if you didn't laugh at that joke, be glad, okay? That means you're pure of heart and mind. Uh, the rest of you, shame. Shame. We'll come back to that. I am a terrible driver, though, so that might be genetic. Um, I've totaled three cars, but actually, you guys, I think that has more to do with being gay and sleeping with men than it does have to do with being Asian. And anybody who sleeps with men in here, you might be able to back me up on this. Something about being lied to my entire sexual life about what six inches looks like. Now my depth perception is <laughs> you know? Like I can't <laughs> parallel park, bumper to bumper traffic is a disaster for me. How big is this microphone? 18 inches. 
inches? I don't know, you know? I just have so many sample sizes to choose from. It's really tough. So obviously, as uh, Christian as my parents are, they did not take it super well when I came out of the closet, mostly because I did not come out of the closet. They read my journal when I was 17. Um, yes, gasp is right. Um, it was rough because at that point in my life, my journal was less of like an introspective thoughts and dreams journal and more of just a BuzzFeed list of guys I was sucking, you know? Like, uh, <laughs> no content to sift through, just straight to the headlines. It was clickbait for my parents. Uh, they couldn't resist, they had to see it. Um, it was tough for them. But what's even funnier, so I, I mentioned I was adopted. I have two adopted siblings. They're biological to my mom and dad. And I have an older brother, and a couple of years ago, he also came out of the closet, which is like, wow, you know? Like, <laughs> I couldn't have planned a better prank, you know? Like that, oh, you punked him good, Jesus. I uh, can't. Oh, it's so funny. It's so delicious to me because my parents, they really, like, they truly rolled the dice there, you know? Like, they made one themselves, they got one off the rack, and they both turned out gay, you know? Like, <laughs> I don't know what the scientific argument is there, but that feels like nurture, bitch, okay? <laughs> that feels like your fault. What was going on there? Bet you wish you didn't vaccinate us now, mom and dad, huh? Do you want two sons without polio or two straight sons? You can't have it all, all right? You gotta give some stuff up. Now again, I am just joking. I love vaccines, okay? <laughs> Can't get enough. Uh, every time a new one comes out, I'm just like, rah, 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 you know? Uh, <laughs> I just love it. My poor dad, oh goodness. Uh, he's been through the ringer. It was really hard for him. My dad is sort of like an amateur pastor in a lot of ways. Like we didn't go to a church growing up. We had church at home led by my dad and oh, my God, yes, now that I'm saying it, I was in a cult. That's what that is. Um, it's not a church at all. Um, but yeah, he had a real rough time with me growing up. I was a real shit kid. Uh, I was difficult to raise. I remember when I was 13, we had a fight that was so outrageous that my dad tried to exercise me in the middle of the fight. And when I realized what he was doing, I just started to laugh maniacally in his face which in hindsight did not help my case, you know? Like, that seems like something a demon might do in that situation. I might as well have just crab walked across the living room floor, spinning my head around, spewing puke everywhere, you know? Like, I don't know, it was weird growing up in the Midwest uh, with my situation because like, I find that my life now is just a never ending guessing game of where are you really from, you know? Um, it's just exhausting to get it all the time. Like I was at a party recently and a guy I did not even know approached me from across the party and without even knowing my name, the first words out of his lips were, um, I'm sorry, but what, um, what kind are you? Like I'm some sort of unmarked dessert on a buffet bar, you know? Like it was just that casual. And it's so frustrating, it's like fine, I don't mind having the conversation. I don't mind answering the questions. It just never turns into an interesting conversation, you know? Like, every single day, it's just like, oh, I'm from South Korea. And they're like, oh, cool. I taught English in South Korea for a year. And I'm like, awesome. I knew some D students in high school who needed to escape, too, you know? Like, <laughs> we all know. Them. Okay, good. Some of you knew some people who needed to flee. Um, that's good. It's just frustrating. I don't know. It was never worse. I worked at the Olive Garden for two years. Um, hold for applause. Okay. Um, Wow, some of you think you're too good to uh, clap for the Olive Garden. Well, have I got something to tell you? You're not! <laughs> um, no, I love the Olive Garden. I worked there for a while, and I remember this one time I approached this table. It was like three elderly white guys, and, you know, we, you know, exchanged uh, pleasantries. And then at one point, one of the guys at the table was like, Say, son, are you Korean? And I was like, oh, my God, that's an amazing guess. And how did you know that? And he was like, well, I fought in the Korean War, so I know a thing or two about this. And I was like, what does this mean for our relationship now? <laughs> Do you need a new server? Uh, are you going to have a flashback or something? Like, what's going on? Like, it's almost worse when people guess correctly. Like, I met this guy on a dating app, and we exchanged numbers, and we were texting back and forth. And out of the blue, at one point, he was like, so you're Korean, right? And I was like, yeah, that's amazing. Like, how did you guess that? And he was like, your eye shape. And I was like, ugh, like, are you gonna measure my skull next? Like, what, <laughs> where are we going with this? And the weirder thing is, is that I hadn't sent him any pictures of my face. I'd only sent him pictures of my butthole. So I don't know what eye shape <laughs> he was talking about. Very confusing, very confusing. I deal with a lot of questions about my race, but one question I get a lot 
Um, and it's sort of like a jokey question. Um, I, you, get, you probably get it too. Do you get like a jokey question that bugs you? Okay, so on the count of three, we're going to say the question that we get at the same time. And hopefully it's the same question because this is on TV, okay? <laughs> this is a, a big life moment for me. <laughs> so if you mess this up, just think about, have that weight on your shoulders um, as I count down from three, okay? <laughs> One, two, three. Do you eat dog? Okay, you didn't say anything. Um, <laughs> that's outrageous. Um, no, that's the question. People think they're so clever, like they're the first person to ever like ask me this question, do you eat dog? And it used to piss me off and like upset me because I get it, like I know why you're asking the question. But at this point in my life, I'm like, yeah, I would eat a dog, why not? I eat all the other meats. Uh, doesn't seem like an issue. Okay, I'm losing you. Um, I can sense that. But, 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 but bear with me, there's a point to this. Do I have any dog owners in the audience tonight? Make some noise if you're a dog owner. Okay. You guys have dogs. Here's the thing. I would eat your dog, sight unseen. I would. Um, you don't even have to show me a picture. I just know that I would eat it uh, if it were presented to me, if it were cooked nicely, you know? Um, but the thing is, is that's the, the line for me. Like, there's all these ads in New York right now that PETA has that has like a spectrum of animals and it's got like a pig on one side and a dog on the other. And it's like, why would you eat this pig? But you won't eat that dog. And it's like, because I've never met that pig, okay? If I knew its first name, that might change things. That's the message of Charlotte's Web. It really is, is you can eat any old pig you want as long as it doesn't have an inner life, you know? And that's where things get really dicey. Like, what they need to do is do what they do with cigarette packs uh, in Europe. You know, they put, like, blackened lungs on the outside of the packs. If they would just put facts about the cows on the burger patties, I'd never eat another goddamn burger, you know? If it was just like, this is Daisy. Her favorite color is blue. And I'd be like, I can't eat Daisy. She likes Magnolia. I love that movie. <laughs> We have too much in common, I can't do it. I'm not super into animals. I'm scared of them most days. Like I get really anxious, like please stop sharing these videos of crows that have learned how to talk and can use tools. I don't wanna see it, stay in your own lane, crows. <laughs> Talking and using tools is sort of our thing, all right? People are afraid that immigrants are gonna come in and take their jobs, they should be worried about the crows, okay? <laughs> They're the real threat. Like, sir, what do you do for a living? A librarian? A crow could do that in a second. <laughs> you should see some of the things these crows are doing. Animals are terrible. I find bees to be high strung, you know? Every single bee wakes up in the morning and is like, if that person even looks at me wrong, I will kill myself. <laughs> it's like, take it down a notch, okay? Chill out. I do, uh, I am a cat person. That might not shock any of you. Um, yes, thank you. I am, I love, I have two cats at home. Their names are Leah Michelle and Little Richard. Um, those are my cats. I love my cats. Um, here's a fun fact about the difference between cats and dogs. If you live alone uh, with a dog and you die, it'll take the dog three weeks to begin to eat you and it'll start at the fingers. If you live alone with a cat and you die alone, it'll take three days and it'll start at the face. Um, <laughs> It's sort of a fundamental difference. But here's the thing about my cats is they don't even wait that long. Every single night, I wake up about four hours into sleep to them eating me. Um, and every single night, they're just like, oh my God, I'm sorry, were you not dead? <laughs> oh my God, this is so embarrassing. We thought you were dead. <laughs> you just, you had your eyes closed for so long. Uh, this feels like your fault, not ours. Uh, no, 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 you go back to sleep, we'll be back. Um, were you guys here together? Oh, that's sweet. You guys in love? You are, she didn't answer yet. Um, <laughs> strange, she still looks a little shell-shocked. Maybe you should have checked in before you answered. Real quick, made sure that those feelings are reciprocated. How'd you do that? How'd you come to be in love? Well, you're not gonna say, are there single people in here tonight? Make some noise if you're single. Okay, so now you're withholding information from the rest of us, okay? So cough it up. How, what's like, a, how do you guys maintain your relationship? Like what's a word of advice that you would have for me? Like how do you keep, keep him from fleeing, you know? It's the same for you. 
conversation. Wow. <laughs> oh, God. Oh, no, please stop. You're making me horny. <laughs> conversation. That's ridiculous. Um, if you don't want to tell me the truth, you just can say so. You know, you don't have to make up stories. It's fine. Thank you so much for your help. Um, no, I'm fascinated with people who manage to, you know, make it work, stay in love. I'm uh, recently just went through my first breakup ever, um, which was tough. Thank you. No, you know, it's fine. Whatever. You know what, you guys? It means less when I have to ask for it, okay? It really does, but appreciated. Yeah, it was a really tough breakup on me. Within three days of the breakup, I cut off all my hair, started crying in public and doing yoga for the first time. And I was like, oh my God, I'm turning into a white woman. What's happening to me? I'm changing. <laughs> the yoga has been very helpful, though. I like that a lot. At the beginning of yoga class, they ask you to do this thing. They ask you to set your intention. And I always set my intention for revenge. Um, <laughs> and I found that to be very therapeutic. Uh, it really has been great. Oh, being single is the worst, you guys. It really is. I know it's cliche to talk about, but it's very difficult to be single right now. Like, in, since the breakup, um, I've been stood up on three different first dates by three different men. Yeah, that's not even made up for the joke. It's real. Um, and it's tough. Yeah, I know. I think the hardest part about that for me, though, is just not knowing how those men died. You know, like what <laughs> happened to that? <laughs> is it a grease fire, some sort of animal attack? It's the not knowing that hurts the most, you know? Um, very difficult. I don't know, I'm just scared, you know? I'm, I'm panicking a little bit about being single. I was single for eight years before I met this last guy, and now I'm just afraid that I'm, it's gonna be another eight years, I'm gonna turn 44, and I'll have had nobody in, in that time span, you know? And that's a really scary prospect for me. Okay, no, 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 wrong. You're reading my cues incorrectly. Um, <laughs> it's crazy to me because I just gave you so much time to do that math in your head, and not a single one of you mother gasped, <laughs> pulled your hair out in shock and agony at my age. I am not 36 years old. How dare you? Listen, I get that that was more of a lie and less of a joke, but I think the premise of the joke that I would ever turn 30 is hilarious, you know? Because uh, it's not gonna happen. Uh, turning 30 is a lifestyle choice, and it's not one that I agree with, you know? Hate the sin, love the sinner, that sort of thing. Um, no, no, it's not for me. I won't be turning 30. On the eve of my 30th birthday, I will be walking into the river with a pocket full of rocks. Uh, that's how I plan on handling that. I get why you guys might think that I was 36, though, because I will look like this forever. Um, until the day I suddenly and without warning look like a pillar of salt ready to disintegrate into the wind, you know? Uh, sort of the deal we signed with the devil, it's tragic, really. Um, but uh, it's better than aging like you guys. <laughs> you guys have been so much fun. Um, but unfortunately, we're sort of at the end of our time together now. I know, it's gone by so fast. But I want to leave you with like my favorite sort of story to tell audiences. Um, it's about me growing up. Like, when I was growing up, I was a pretty gay kid, um, which is sort of a ridiculous premise for a joke, because what does that mean to say a child is gay? Like, there's not a six-year-old walking around this country crushing puss right now, okay? Like, <laughs> I don't know what it means. But for the sake of my story, I was a pretty gay kid, uh, and it was never more apparent to me or my family than Christmas, 1994. I wanted what every little boy in the nation wanted for Christmas that year. Say it with me. The Crimp and Curl Pony by the Cabbage Patch Company. Okay, um, again, left hanging. Uh, whatever, the Crimp and Curl Pony, I wanted it. My mom was super cool, she got it for me. I opened it up on Christmas morning. I just started crimping and curling right away, you know, couldn't resist. My dad, less enthused, uh, he looked at my mom and he was like, Janet, what the f like, this is a girl's toy. This is a toy for little girls. Why would you get him this? And my mom looked at my dad in his eyes and said, well, Ken, my brother Bob, he used to get baby dolls for Christmas, and now he's a pediatrician. So. <laughs> Connect the dots. And I was, and my dad was just like, what the f do you think he's gonna be, a f horse hair stylist? Like, what's the end game here, Janet? <laughs> and, you know, I remember, 
my dad saying that. You know, and I was just six years old, and I, rem I remember thinking, is that a profession? Is that something that I can do? Like, does it require a college degree? Like, how can I make that happen? Dad, don't leave me hanging. All right, I've been Joel Booster. You guys have been fantastic. Thank you so much.